Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be creating a plywood template or jig for a house staircase. So I'll show you what I'm doing to make my template, lay it out, as well as accommodate the template to a variety of different tread profiles, thicknesses, all that good stuff. We'll try and look at the different ways that you can do this in this video. So stay tuned and uh, join me for the ride. To make the template, we're going to need four pieces of scrap one by two could be a little bit wider than that. But one by two looks pretty good. And you're gonna wanna have a jointed edge on at least one side. It's gonna be very important to have a straight edge to create that, uh, that nice straight template. So make sure you've got four pieces, about 24 inches long or so with one edge jointed. You will need a router with a flush trim bit. This happens to be a half inch spiral compression bit, which is gonna be very nice for cutting with a double bearing on top. So that should work real nice. Uh, you could go with a wider bit, but that won't work very well in this instance because whenever you get to the top of the riser, you only have uh, three quarter inches wide up here. So a half inch bit is pretty ideal for that. Ideally at this stage, it's nice if you have a piece of your tread material around. If you don't, it's gonna be close to an inch and you actually don't have to have that just perfect for this because you're gonna be jamming wedges under it to drive it up. But if you've got a piece of tread, that would work great. Also a piece of riser material. But again, most importantly of all is to have a few of the wedges that you will be using because you want to match the angle of those wedges for your template. So an important note on the size of the template. The way I marked this out, I drew a couple parallel lines with the top edge here. There's a two inch space here, and then there's another two sets of lines here, and this line represents the top of my one by 12 skirt board. Now, the reason I left two inches above is that way I can screw a piece of guide onto here and that will help me as I go along marking out my skirt board. I won't have to try and find the exact, exact angle pivoting this all the time. It'll have a two inch guide on here that I can just slide up and down the skirt board. So that's what we're gonna kind of lay out first. I'm gonna lay this out in permanent marker in hopes that you guys will be able to see this a little bit better. But the first thing I'm gonna do is move my double square to two inches and I'm gonna mark that top two inch overhang where I can, uh, gives me a little space to screw a guide onto. Okay, so that, there's that two inch line. Now I, uh, I printed out the little piece of the drawing in SketchUp where I have this drawn up. And I know from the top of my skirt board to the front edge of my nosing is gonna be two and three eighths. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark that two and three eighths plus the two inches that I just drew on there and make another parallel line across here. Now what that line represents is actually the top edge of my nosing right here. Now just for the sake of visualization, this is the top of my 11 and a quarter inch skirt board. So I'm gonna come down here, 11 and a quarter plus two inches is 13 and a quarter. Right there you see 11 and a quarter. And why don't we go ahead and just mark where the bottom of this skirt board will be just so we have that visual reference also. Here's why it's kind of helpful to mark the bottom of your skirt board also. This template, not only do you need to route out where the treads in the riser will be, you also need to route it all the way through the bottom of your skirt board. That way you can slide the treads and risers up in 
to your skirt board. So if you don't go far enough with your dado, obviously that won't work. So you can see here, if I put these two pieces on top of each other, you can see this is the bottom black line here. That's the bottom of my skirt board. And you can see I've got my template going far enough past on the riser and the tread that it'll go through the bottom of the skirt board and that's important. One additional note before we go any further, as you can see, this template is at, is at an offset, meaning the top of my tread is not square to the top edge of the template. I have seen other guys make these templates where they run the top of their tread parallel with the top edge of the template. That's fine too, you can do it that way. As uh, with anything, there's a lot of ways to skin this cat. I think it makes, to me, it makes more sense to do it this way, simply from the standpoint that then I have a nice edge up here that I can screw or clamp a piece to uh, as I work up and down my, my skirt board. But if you do router your tread and riser in running square with your piece of plywood, it's just simply a matter of the fact you're gonna have only a little bit of material up here on this top edge, but you still will have space on the bottom where you could screw a guide to on the bottom. You'll just be referencing off the bottom of your skirt board instead of the top. Now it's time to start tacking on our pieces where we're going to make the template. So I've got four pieces again, all of them jointed, one edge, nice and straight, and got a framing square here with a guide attached. Uh, my rise is six and 11 sixteenths. My run is 10 and a quarter. So you could put your guide across here. You could freehand it, whatever you want to do. I doubled up my measurements. Um, so I'm all the way down at 13 and three eighths and 20 and a half. So this top represents my tread. Obviously this represents my riser. I'll bring this over here and you can just run these pieces long and I'm just going to use a pin nailer. We'll just knock these off after I'm done. You could also screw it, um, but pin nailer is pretty easy. At this point, I don't think I will any longer need this guide on the framing square. So I'll take it off because now I'll be working with this piece as my reference line. Now I know I already marked across here where I wanted the top corner of my tread to be. So I'm gonna put a mark down right there just so I know where the front edge of my tread is gonna be. And then my riser will come up in here like this. I know I want an inch and a quarter overhang uh, for the nosing. So I'll take this point and come back an inch and a quarter and mark, mark that. So that will be the front edge of my riser. So grab piece number two come up here to the front edge of my riser using my framing square to keep everything square at 90 degrees. And I won't tack this on here. I need to drop this down an inch and a quarter or an inch from my tread. So let me go ahead and put that tread in there. We'll push it together nice and tight. Make sure everything looks good. Want to use plenty of pins because I don't want this to uh, inadvertently move. So the front edge of my tread will actually be about like that, but everything is nice and square. At this point, this is where I need my wedges. So our next pieces are going to come in here like so. And if I didn't mention it before on these two inside pieces, 
you want to cut about a 50 degree angle on those so that you can slide those into place. So here we got our tread will go in here, our riser here. Put that into position. I'm going to move you around to this back side so that you can see this part a little bit better. Hey, real quick, guys, if you're finding this video educational, informative, helpful, anything, if it's helping you make money, you can support this channel by purchasing your tools through the affiliate links that I provide in the video description or visiting my Amazon storefront page where I've got lists of a lot of the tools that I use, stuff you might not have seen or know about. Be sure to check that out. Whenever you click through those links and add to your cart, that helps support this channel. I really appreciate it. In our template, we'll be sliding our treads in first and then driving our wedges in behind that. Risers go in and then the same thing, you'll drive a wedge in behind that. So we want this point to come right to that 90 degree intersection where the tread and the riser will meet. So that's the first thing I'm going to focus on, is making sure that these two points line up. So we're kind of going to be putting these in at the same time. Now these wedges go to a blunt end. It's really important that you don't um, that you leave some room to hammer these in and drive them home. This piece of tread that I have here actually has a cup in it. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to replace it with this other piece. It's plain down to the th same thickness that my treads will be, but it's a lot straighter and flatter, a little bit easier for me to work with here. Okay. Get, get these shims wedges, whatever you want to call them. People get really fired up about words. Now I've got my wedges inserted about where I'll be driving those whenever I put everything together. So I'll go ahead now, make sure everything's pressed together firmly. So, yeah, we'll use this one. Tread goes in, wedge goes in, riser goes in, wedge goes in. It should be really nice. There are a few different things we need to talk about in the nosing, so we'll get to that in just a second. But you do want to put a stop on the back side here where you're going to be routing this out so that your router has a, a stop and you don't just keep going with it. Um, want to make sure we've got some decent meat going around the back side of this template to hold everything together since we're cutting all the way through it here. So I cut a couple blocks just to carefully insert. Don't push them in and throw things off, but it's just something for our router to bump up against. So how are we going to handle the nosing on the tread? You could have a variety of different profiles and even with a bull nose like this, sometimes those vary depending on whether it's a true bull nose or they only run at a partial bull nose. In this case here, what I'm going to be installing is more of a craftsman style slash contemporary style tread, which has a 532nd radius on the corners the edges are just eased at 530 seconds now obviously that is smaller than the radius that my half inch router bit is going to leave so that won't work for me to use a half inch bit to route this in so let's talk about some different options for dealing with the nosing Okay, so let's talk about the most common tread profile probably, and that is going to be the one inch tread with the half circle on the front edge. Um, variety of ways you could probably do that. 
Um, one of them would be to use a one inch Forstner bit and just drill a hole on the front here uh, and it'll probably match up pretty close, might not be perfect. So second option and big shout out to Keith Mathewson here. He's got some videos on YouTube. He's an old school stair builder um, and he threw up a couple videos several years ago uh, with some ideas on how to do this process. And I saw this on his channel, what he recommended doing whenever you have an odd front profile, such as an unpredictable bullnose is take a piece of your tread material and wrap it in shrink wrap. And then you can put your piece of tread in place on your template. So then what you can actually do is this is, I'm just using some scrap pieces here, so this isn't real precise, but you'd put your tread nosing in here, box out around it, and then use a product like Bondo or this Durham's putty, which sets up really quick and fill in this radius void here really well, sand off the top, and then you would have an exact match for your nosing. So that's a really great option um, to wrap your tread in plastic and do that number whenever you've, you've got kind of an unpredictable bull nose on there. So neither of the options of using a Forstner bit or doing plastic with Bondo work well for me whenever you're doing more of a squared off style tread because the bit you're gonna be using on your router is probably gonna be at least a half inch in diameter and you would have to use an extremely small bit to get this radius. There's probably, you, you could use two routers and, and try and go that route, um, but there might be actually a better option. And this was suggested to me by my buddy Trey, and that is to cope the nosing of your tread into your skirt board. As you can see here on this template, I did not bring my nosing out at all past here. So I'm gonna be routing probably a quarter inch or three eighths inch deep into my skirt board. And what you can actually do is cut back an inch and a half or so to match the depth of your dado. And then you can just run your nosing right past and then it's essentially coped into the skirt board. So just to give you the visual again, we're gonna cut back and a, a, whatever the depth of our dado is and slide it past an inch and a quarter. And you can see there, if you do it right, it's a little bit hard to do it right here. And then slide our wedge in on the back. We've created a cope joint on the nosing <clears throat> and everything will go together really well. I think the Trey's idea of coping the treads in is a genius idea and that's what I plan to do on this project. I think it'll finish out like money. So that's my plan. The one thing that I am gonna do different, my nosing is actually right here and I just went to 90 degrees where the tread and riser front edge meet before and on this next template that I'm about to route, I'm gonna bring this in a half inch. So I'm gonna bring this a half inch past, which will give me plenty to get past that quarter inch radius, which my router bit will leave. This doesn't have to be precise as far as a tight fit because my bearing is not gonna care about these little cracks in here. It just needs to hold up long enough uh, to route it, then we'll knock these off. Now it's time to fire up the jigsaw. We've got all of our pieces pinned on here. Uh, go ahead and hog the most of it out with the jigsaw, being really careful not to get too close to where I'm gonna be routing. No need to ruin this whole thing by overcutting with the jigsaw, uh, but then we'll hit it with the compression bit, flush bit with the router, and knock the pieces off and this will be done.
All right, guys, so routed just a test piece in here. You'll have to excuse me. She's in one of those moods. Got this routed in about a quarter inch deep. You can see I've got my cope on the front edge of this, about an inch and a half back or so. Coming up to this line here, that's where I want my nosing to be an inch and a quarter past the riser. We can go ahead and insert the riser. It's a little bit tight, but I think that's probably a good thing. We've got this pressed down. Turn this around here and you can see, insert these wedges little tap, tap, tappy, and again up here. This piece actually has a pretty bad cup in it. But that looks like it grew together. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very nice. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, fabricating this template. Um, actually, this isn't the template. This is the finished product. This is the template. Um, there will be a lot more videos uh, as I work through this build and install. So stay tuned, Check, look for a playlist on my channel on uh, this whole project put together. But I wanted to do this video covering how, how to make the template. I'm by no means a lifetime stair builder. I've got a lot to learn, but just trying to kind of bring all this information together and put it in a video um, that guys can reference and build off of. So hopefully it accomplished that. I think it's gonna work. I hope I didn't screw anything up too bad, um, but let me know what you think in the comments. If you've got any questions, as always, thanks for watching, appreciate your support, and we'll see you on the next video.